Hello, and welcome to Broads and Books. I'm Amy. And I'm Erin. And this is a very special bonus episode. Best of 2021 pop culture. So far. So far. So far. So far. Yeah, yeah, we've got so far. Seven, seven months in, and yeah. we're, we're taking stock. Yep. And I don't think he needs an introduction anymore, but we do have the one and the only Heath with us, our honorary broad. Welcome back. How do you feel about being our one and only special guest? I love it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many times I wish that this was a video podcast, <laughs> but especially when Heath is here. Yes. I want his expressions to be mm-hmm. given to the masses. I'm very animated. <laughs> Thank you for joining us again, Heath. Yes. Yeah, my pleasure. We're always looking for opportunities to bring you back to talk about celebrity nonsense. I'm like coronavirus in that way. <laughs> <laughs> always looking for opportunities to bring me back. And just mutating into new variants, uh-huh. finding new ways to infect us. Uh-huh. Excellent. Yes. Perfect. Great. Yeah. Well, in the final segment of our episodes each week, we give pop culture recommendations, but we've never spent an entire episode discussing pop culture. No. Ever. No. This is brand new territory. It is. I'm so glad that we have Heath with us. Yeah, it was neat. In this, in this territory. Mm-hmm. Um, today's episode is all about iconic moments in pop culture in 2021. We have all chosen a few different ones. We're all going to dissect each one for your listening pleasure. I'm anticipating we came at it from a few different ways. Yes. All of us. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be a, a, a fast and loosed Loosed, loosed, <laughs> loose. Yeah. loose. I like that. Fast and loose. Like loosed. Yeah. yeah. Episode. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys use as your criteria in developing these? If it's stuck in my brain. There you like, go. That's what it was for me. Like, yeah. I remember that. I enjoyed it. I want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Probably if the things that uh, um, people talked about that wouldn't normally talk. Like something that yeah. kind of cl- got captured a collective consciousness. Yes. I like that. Yeah. That's better criteria. <laughs> <laughs> Heath has that way of summarizing what we're saying better. Better. Much saying better. it better. Much better. If he started his own podcast, it'd be disastrous. That's why we keep having him That's as a guest. That's why we keep having him here. So he doesn't get offset the time that. or the opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We don't want you going off and doing your he own thing. He scratches his itch here so that he doesn't do right. it on his own. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I also don't have the software. <laughs> Ooh, that's true. Okay, so we okay. can use your lack of knowledge okay. to our benefit. Mm-hmm. That's great. I okay. also have very little knowledge. Just for the record, if we lost Amy, mm-hmm. the ship no. is sunk. We just stand on a street corner and shout our opinions. Yep. Passersby. We will admit that my limit, my knowledge is limited because just five minutes ago, our microphones weren't working and all I could do was just stare at the equipment. <laughs> I just stared at you, which is even less helpful. Well, it worked. It did. It did. Except then Heath said, hey, what about this? And it was solved. It was solved. So there we go. So what we're going to do is go around Mm -hmm. one by one, Mm -hmm. talk about our top three moments. Mm -hmm. I will say going in, I think it's probably not great that I am a 44-year-old woman deeming pop culture in 2021. Mm. You know, I think that I don't know a lot of people that like Jack Harlow showed up in a little Nas X. I have no idea who that is. Mm. Everyone's talking about Olivia Rodrigo. I don't, I don't, like I know her face. Mm -hmm. I don't know why people like her. Okay. I also don't understand Gen Z fashion. Okay. So I'm coming at it from that perspective. And and frankly, we don't have the answers for you. (laughs) No, 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 no. Uh Uh-uh. So these may not be the defining moments of the year, but they're things that I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. There are defining moments. That's all that really matters. Yeah. That's what this whole thing's about. Right. So I think my first one I want to pose as a question. Oh, oh. To the group. Oh, okay. Which is, do we think that movie theaters are dead? Oh. Because this year... (laughs) Sorry, that was not... I know people love them. That's not fair. But this year, right, we have like $30 releases on Disney+. Plus. We've got like movies streaming on HBO Max as well as theaters. We've got like Amazon renting out movies while they're in the theaters. Heath, you and I and Eric saw a movie in a theater a few Mm -hmm. weeks ago for the first time. And it was cool, but it was also like, huh. Uh Uh-huh. Scarlett Johansson is hoping that they're not dead. Scarlett Johansson is hoping. Yeah. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't I mean, I, when we went and saw that movie, uh, Black Widow, which is very good. It's very good. It yet, yes. It just seemed so strange to me that a person was sitting next to me when yes. there were uh, empty seats. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Serious? <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, yes. you know, there's, you could be somewhere else. Someone today. sat right next to you? Uh-huh. To him. So, I, they are allowing that now. They allow yeah. those seats to be mm-hmm. sold. Oh. 
Yeah, I might be pregnant now. I don't know. <laughs> I, that's fair. That is fair. There's a whole multitude of tests you need to take now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And it's already too late for an abortion, so no, sorry. Well, yeah. Yet, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> if you even thought about it, it's too late. It's not happening. What do you think, Erin? Are they dead? Yeah, I think it's going to be a tough uphill battle to come back. Mm-hmm. I think that there's something about it that people like and that yeah. there was a window there where everyone was like, oh, I got to get out of the house. This seems great. But then when you go, you remember the exact things that are great about streaming it at home. Right. Like I can is, pause and go to the bathroom. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I don't really have, not, um, people would argue you don't have to shower to go to the movie theater, but I try to be presentable when yeah. I go in public. I want to so put on that. clean underwear and deodorant, you know. They'll let you buy movie theater popcorn and take it out. So oh. there's really no. That's really the thing that draws me, I think. Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, if the, the movie theaters are always trying to um, sort of, they, or at least for the last few years, have been trying to give you reasons to like uh, make the experience better. Yeah. yeah. But I think the thing is that at home, you'd have to deal with strangers. That's it. Right. That's it. In a movie theater, you've got to deal with a bunch of, you Stra- know, Yahoos. Of, yeah, and, mm-hmm. you know, they might not know how to act. Mm-hmm. Or if you are here in Des Moines and you go to the Fleur Cinema on a weekend matinee, you hear a lot of old people yes. yelling at each other, mm-hmm. discussing plot points. Mm-hmm. Oh. So mm-hmm. you don't have that at home, no. hopefully. And nothing angers me more than a rapper <laughs> in a movie. <laughs> It just is infuriating to me. I took that first as a R A P P E R. Oh, yeah, like someone uh, spitting uh, rhymes at the hey, theater. Rap. So much. You always get in the movie theater and there's that guy rapping, <laughs> rapping, and I can't do it. <laughs> no, I meant candy rapper. Okay, that makes yeah. more sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, I think especially like people who grew up at around our age, like movie theaters were very like important to mm-hmm. us, or at least they were to me. And so it's like I don't want to say total goodbye to the experience, but at the same time. Right. I like sitting on my couch. Mm-hmm. I wonder if we're going to see kind of a, a shift where there's certain movies that are better experienced in a movie theater yeah. for the sound system and the screen. Right. I wonder if we're going to see that more those types of movies that want theater releases and, yeah. you know, your romantic comedy or something that doesn't need all of that extra mm-hmm. that they just release it at home. I don't yeah. know. You did bring up a good point, though. ScarJo is suing pissed. Mm-hmm. Disney she Plus. Pissed. Mm-hmm. She's pissed. She's pissed. I thought it was, uh, I mean, obviously she's, they've known for quite some time that it was going to be released on right. Disney Plus and the movie theater. So I thought it was polite of her to wait until two weeks after it came out <laughs> to file the lawsuit. That was thoughtful. It was yeah. also interesting, yeah. like, was she seeing the returns and she's like, nope, I'm not making that much money. Uh-huh. I wondered that, too, if it was kind of a wait and see, like, okay, if it was pretty much what I thought, then yeah. I guess it is what it is. But I was... Yeah. I mean, I she has an argument. I mean, yeah. you she should at least be getting a cut of the $30 on Disney Plus then. For sure. If that's yeah. what you'd put in her contract was that was where the money was mm-hmm. and that's what you used to get her in the movie. That's kind of shady yeah. business. So that's my my first pop culture moment of 2021 is just wondering what the hell's going to happen to movie theaters. I that's a and good I one. And I don't I don't know the future. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. But I will say I do like pausing and peeing. Uh-huh. That's that's a joy. And that's a good it thing. It's a joy. Maybe they could build that into an experience. Like halfway yeah. through, you just the movie stops and everyone goes. That's fine. But again, then there's people, and then right. there's a well, line in the women's room. Yeah. Because yeah. you know it takes longer for us to pee. Maybe there should just be like, you know, a theater for women and a theater for men. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, are we going in the wrong so, direction? So <laughs> you're proposing segregation oh, based on I? gender. Yeah. Well, you know, it's not around these ten dollar terms. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Heath's hot take. This is why we brought him that's, on. That is yeah, exactly that's why. It. That's great. That's perfect. So, what about you, Aaron? What's a pop culture moment okay. of yours so well, far? Well, my first, I kind of did it as categories. Okay. Because to me, these two, while not related, are sort of for me a pop culture important moment, which is remembering that it's really the OGs that bring us the best. Be- best pop mm. culture and i'm going to give you two examples okay dolly parton vaccine song oh oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. to okay. jolene uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, that sticks in my mind i can't get over it yep the second was glenn close twerking at the oscars <laughs> <laughs> to the <da> butt <laughs> secondarily that people thought that was spontaneous right right right, right. those two things just og moments yeah. that really Really cut through what 2021 was about. Mm-hmm. Unexpected, mm-hmm. weird, and also sort of delightful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we have the uh, the uh, coronavirus to thank for both of them. Yes. It's true. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. true. Mm-hmm. 
I just got such a kick out of the next day after the Glenn Close thing that everyone was like, oh my gosh, who knew that she knew that song? And I'm like, they, really? This is where we're at? Mm-hmm. Like, I was afraid for mankind for a period of time. And then those types of things, you're like, but I don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're still afraid. That could be the overall message of this is pop culture so far is showing we're afraid, afraid for mankind. Yes. And womankind. And all of the kinds. And all of the kinds. All of it. And as far as Dolly Parton, first of all, we had a cold shoulder shirt. It's true. Yeah, during the song, which then made us wonder: Oh, are the arms tatted up? Are they really? Because they're, they're not shown. Window. They're not in that window. Right. So, conspiracy theory abounds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I saw her on a talk show this week that someone asked why she always wears long sleeves. Is it because of the tattoos? <laughs> and she, she didn't. She said because of other reasons. I assume it's because it's harder to get plastic surgery on your arms to make them <laughs> not look old. That's true. They'll betray the age. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because you see, she often wears gloves. Yeah. Like, you know, like, uh, it's hard. Again, it's harder without just covering it up. To sort right. Of that, Smart. Uh, yeah. Make that area look younger than, than it is. That's it. I still like the idea of tattoos, but yeah. I think you're probably spot on. Yeah. yeah. She did admit that she had some tattoos, which kind of surprised me. I didn't know what? Know what I she said they were just little, uh, little things here and there. Little no, in my mind, there? there's st- there's still like the sailor Jerry, like old school mm-hmm. m- little love things mom. here and there. Yeah, is that's perhaps the most provocative <laughs> sentence Dolly Parton's ever said. Maybe that she's got like the barbed wire thing around. Yes, from like 15 years yes. ago. Yes, you know, with, everybody. Yeah. Out of uh, maybe she has like a tramp, an old school tramp oh, stamp. Yeah. Just says Jolene. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, that's fun to imagine. Yeah. Okay. Good, good pick, Aaron. Mm-hmm. I like it. Mm-hmm. Some OG-ness. OGs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm, bring in the heat. Heath, <laughs> over to you. Well, speaking of uh, OGs, I would I would offer up the Friends reunion. Aha. Uh-huh. Yes. Oh, yes. I yeah. Feel yes. Like that was a pop culture moment. For it them. really mm-hmm. was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was your favorite thing from the reunion, or one of the things that you liked? I think overall it was generally, and I'm a sucker for this, like uh, watching anything on TV where the people participating, you can tell they're having a good time. Yeah. I yeah. feel like I'm having a good time by mm-hmm. proxy, but I'm also alone. <laughs> 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 and I yes. feel like that's, that's all I want. <laughs> yes. That's a good point. Yeah. And they did. They did. Like, I, cause mm-hmm. I feel like, especially when you're watching reunions and stuff, you're like on super on edge looking for awkwardness. Like, Ooh, right. do they right. actually talk? Mm-hmm. Have they talked at all in the past? 15 years right it seems like they do mm-hmm. except for jennifer aniston yeah it felt like she was out of a lot of stuff like she would try to get in and they'd be like no that's not what happened <laughs> <laughs> no Mm-mm. that was when you're in your dressing room when we were all hanging out right right right, right. no one said that to be clear but <laughs> you could tell there was like a level of mm-hmm. fame there that the others hadn't reached mm-hmm. yeah i will say i mean my uh, only have like a couple of uh, criticisms of it was that James Corden didn't need to be there. No one asked for that. Agreed. No! Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> Why? Yeah. So bad. You uh-huh. had so many people you could have picked to do that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, many so many people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he didn't need to be there. And I thought when they brought on like the uh, guest stars and stuff, like they didn't give him enough time to talk. Like, you know, I mean, Gunther yes. wasn't my favorite character, but it deserved more than 30 seconds to yes. say hello. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or been, the like, parents, right. the people that paid the, played the mm-hmm. parents. Yeah. Agreed. Mm hmm. And instead, they gave airtime to like BTS, yeah. Of, like how much they loved. Like what? The, I don't. Mm-hmm. Why? And you know, somebody had to explain to BTS who what this know, is, who Friends was, yes. what it was before they went on there. And just you know, don't cancel us, K-pop kids. <laughs> <laughs> God bless. We love BTS. We listened to it before we started doing this. That's why we couldn't get the microphone working. Because we're right, right. We're, right. we're watching. BTS. Yeah, we're listening to too that. much. Yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. I just, it seemed like a kind of like an add-on. Like, well, maybe maybe we'll get them wider demographic mm-hmm. i appreciate you them. covering our ass with the you know k-pop demographic because that's a big one of ours don't is. at me <laughs> don't at me <laughs> how do you where do you fall on the matthew perry conspiracy about his look and speech pattern mm. on that reunion uh i think i mean i feel like there was probably a uh I don't know if it's a medical reason is the word I'm looking for, but I mean, something has, you know. Some mm-hmm. event, a medical event right, of yeah. some kind. Yeah, yeah. Some event of some kind. If he doesn't want to talk about it, I guess yeah. You know, yeah. it's yeah. up to him. Fair but, enough. Um, but when you don't talk about it, I mean, then people are going to speculate. Yes. So, mm-hmm. what was What's the conspiracy? Like, what do people they say? They thought, yeah, that he was 
Like yeah. he had a stroke or something? That, or he was having substance abuse issues oh. again. Because his publicist, I think, said it was a dental procedure that had happened, and they couldn't reschedule it around the shooting, and he didn't have time to, like, not be swollen. And He's Matthew Perry. Like, I would think you could reschedule... But again, if it's something as simple as that, then you would just be like, I just yeah, this, yeah, you know? right, yeah. It was kind of honestly. I think that I heard about it before I watched it, and I feel like I'm not sure if watching it, I would have even thought that he was that mm-hmm. off. It just mm-hmm. was in my head. Right. So yeah. then I think you were looking for it. Yeah, it was like they wanted that for Matthew Perry. You know, like that's the storyline. So we got to inject it somewhere. What did you think about this supposedly big reveal that? Jennifer Aniston and David Schwimmer had crushes on each other and were like trying to they wanted to be together but they it, timing was off or whatever oh. yeah I thought that was fine I felt like the <laughs> next day like <laughs> I felt like that was fine <laughs> I just, I mean, I don't know, I, you know, when you think of all the other shows that have come and gone since then, and you're just like, well, yeah, everybody on Glee was having sex all the time. You're just <laughs> yeah. sort of like, okay, I mean, the fact yeah. that they kind it's like, of... like, oh, this had, was simpler times right. back yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. almost made you feel a little, for me, I, I guess I'm more of a cynic. I was like, BS, you totally... There was some point yeah. where you consummated this, yeah. yeah. Especially early on before they were that famous or with other people. I mean, maybe when Jennifer Aniston moved on to Brad Pitt, she was like, easy. Yeah. But... <laughs> But I think, I mean, I mean, you, you think back to whatever, 25 years ago, whenever it started, yeah. like when they kind of hit that level of fame and somehow there was no real scandals. Right. Of any kind. Yes. Like, I mean, if you would try that's to do that now, point. I mean, there would just be that, yeah. all sorts of stuff. And that's another good thing I really did like about the reunion was listening to the writers and the creators that talk about cool. how they made yeah. some of the decisions. Mm-hmm. That was really interesting. Mm-hmm. Or like the little moments where like, uh, I can't remember his name. The guy that plays Joey, Matt LeBlanc. Yeah. Where he like really hurt himself in oh, that yeah. episode. Yeah. It was like those little behind the scenes moments that I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Very. I like pain, I guess. I like watching oh, people yeah. in pain. Yeah. I'm going to take a hot take here <laughs> and say that I could have done without the Lady Gaga. What the? <laughs> and I love Lady Gaga. I love Lady Gaga I love too, her, but why? But why are, I, we, I why are we doing that? Mainly because I don't think that they convinced Lisa Kudrow to sell it. Because she was just yeah. seemed very awkward the whole time. She's like, why, why are we doing this? Yeah. Like someone, you go to a surprise party for them and you're like, they don't like surprises. This is a terrible idea. Mm-hmm. But you go anyway. That's what it felt like. She was like, oh, this, you did this for me. <laughs> Great. Mm-hmm. If it had been timed with this House of Gucci trailer... That, came, oh, yeah. that would have made more sense. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. uh-huh. But it wasn't. No. Mm-mm. And also, I'm really loving all the memes this week of Lady Gaga mm-hmm. with, like, Father, Son, House of Gucci. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's pretty great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if the movie's going to be any good, but... I'm also, in. I'll get to... We have a full list. What am yeah. I doing? I keep trying to go to different moments. Okay. okay. All right. It did also have uh, Justin Bieber dressed as an armadillo. So there was that. Thank you. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it was because at first when I was recalling it, I was like... Was Did he a baked happen? potato? No, he was an armadillo. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. they had a weird fashion show, uh-huh. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which was unnecessary. Right. Super unnecessary. Right. That oh, Matt LeBlanc seemed to be the only person that enjoyed it. Yeah, he mm-hmm. really got a kick out of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and everybody else was like, "Okay, this is we're recording. That's good." He kind of seemed to be the happiest one there. He like, did. yeah, I'm cool. Let's yeah. let's reunite. Yeah. Yeah. Good for him, I say. Yeah, good for him. Mm-hmm. Good for all the friends, you know. Yes. They needed some extra attention, mm-hmm. obviously. Mm-hmm. So my second one. Yes. It seems like so far in 2021, there's a lot of bad news about bad dudes. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. We've got Army Hammer. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. We've mm-hmm. got the dude from that 70s show accused of multiple assaults. Oh, yeah. We've got one of the Hanks kids doing all sorts of Chet Hanks. Oh, yeah. Saying all sorts of weird things. Hot boy getting summer. Accused, <laughs> yep, yep, getting accused of stuff. He's the rapper. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. He's right. the probably the shamed one of the or the one they're all ashamed of. Mm-hmm. Is he the one at the movie theaters that you don't like? That rapper? Yes. He is the one I'm referring to. Yeah. yeah. Right. When you go in, he's just rapping. You're like, no. You're like, nobody asked nope, for this. Nope, Why nope, are you nope, here? Nope. Yeah. Stop nope. it. No. Stop it. He's and the one that Rita claims and Tom doesn't really. That's right. He won't yeah. ever talk about him. Rita is always like, he's doing great. And you're like, that's such a mom thing to do. Like, we love him. <laughs> So we got all those guys, and then we got Bill Cosby released on a technicality. Ooh, I so, forgot. Oh, God, that's a gut punch. So all of that combined with a lot of white people whining about cancel culture uh-huh. just makes me feel like, yeah, the backlash is here, mm-hmm. and that there's no rules for famous dudes. You can mm-hmm. get away with anything. 
Mm-hmm. Don't forget, uh, Ted Cruz also went to Mexico and blamed his children during a polar vortex. <laughs> I completely forgot about Ted Cruz's shenanigans. God damn, Ted Cruz. And A.D. Bryant playing him with the braided mm-hmm. cornrows mm-hmm. on, yeah, that was terrific. I'll never need another no. SNL sketch. That was everything. <laughs> and the fact that they could work it back in the next, I was like, thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I forgot, yeah, that he uh-huh. fully left the state. Mm-hmm. Just said, I'm out. Would you would you um, uh, also like pile on the capital insurrectionists into this uh, bad people behaving yes. badly? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, uh-huh. mm-hmm. because then there was that wonderful like subplot after that of all these women seeing them on dating apps and turning them in, mm-hmm. and that was lovely. That's mm-hmm. amazing. That's some reinforcement of good womankind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yes, a lot of very entitled dudes doing bad stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you just you know you hope. <laughs> You hope the universe uh, kind of takes care of that some at some point down the road because I really hope politicians so. Politicians aren't gonna. They're definitely not <laughs> no, going to. No, They're rewriting no. history. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, and then you know when it comes to like entertainers, you know, like Louis C.K. is planning his comeback, and like all of these guys that were supposedly canceled, mm-hmm. you know, didn't last very long. Bad news. Mm-hmm. Bad news. You really brought the room down. I really did. <laughs> well, you know what? To be fair, though, my my second one kind of piggybacks on that. Oh, okay. So good, 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 good. I All felt right. like 2020 was kind of the year, it, and it doesn't just en- encompass guys, is the uh-huh. year of like, yeah, we already knew that. Like, <laughs> Leah Michelle comes out real toxic oh, on a set. That's not surprising. We knew that, that's right? That's not surprising. Brian yeah. Warner slash Marilyn Manson is super abusive and yeah. manipulative. That's another one, yeah. I feel like we knew that. We knew that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kim Kardashian, shitty to work for. Not a surprise. Shocking. Not a surprise. <laughs> Johnny Depp, crazy and abusive. Yeah, Who that's... saw that coming? <laughs> Who saw that coming? <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres, really bad work environment. Who would have guessed that yeah. that was a facade? Uh-huh, right? Uh-huh. Rachel Hollis, the girl, go wash your oh, face. Oh, that's right. She's maybe a racist and Imagine also a hypocrite. That. Who would have guessed that when your book was named Girl, Go Wash Your Face? Yeah. Who would have figured that out? Royal family. Oh, that Probably they were racist? racist. That and was the that least up. surprising thing. Wait, wait, rich old white people are racist? Right. <laughs> that have lived in a castle. the receipts, please. <laughs> exactly. So I feel like my, that was just a category. Like we already knew all these things, yes. but they really came to the surface. Just people were going for it. It feels like our celebrity cookbook fits uh, episode fits yeah. in with that too, where it's just celebrities like, oh, it turns out they're assholes. Not surprising. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah. That's not, not surprising. Mm-mm. Not even a little bit. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. It's really been a year of like, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's, that's right. And these are like big headlines. I'm not trying to make light of some of these things that people came out and said, you know, like Amber Heard with Johnny Depp, like had to plan this very elaborate ruse to then come out and say he was abusive. Like, I don't want to take away from that. But at the same time, when it came out, you're like, I mean, I assumed. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I guess. I mean, <laughs> just assume they're all terrible. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he plays a pirate very convincingly, like in a weird, like you're pretty sure he's a pirate kind of way. I almost chose the Royals interview as one of this where it was, mm-hmm. and everyone was so shocked. The queen is racist. And like that. No. Mm-hmm. no. Why mm-hmm. are we, Mm-mm. why are we feigning surprise at this? No. Yeah. The best part about that interview is that they didn't wouldn't specifically name the person, but they would eliminate other people. They were like, the queen. No, it wasn't the queen. Your brother. No, it wasn't my brother. Your stepmom. No, not her. Getting warmer. <laughs> your dad. I don't know. It's clearly your dad. Like. There's a very funny show on HBO Max that just debuted recently called The Prince. That is a uh, oh, um, it's, oh animated, it's animated, right? Yeah, and episodes are only like twelve or thirteen minutes, and I recommend you check it out because it's pretty funny. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. It's, about, it's about the royal family, and it's kind of a, a wild caricature of all of them. I am so so it's a, where it's we funny. need to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent category. Mm-hmm. Agree with all of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We already knew. The year of duh. The year of yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shocker. <laughs> Heath. What's next for you? Um, I think uh, um, I'm going to go with uh, Real Housewives Legal Problems. Oh, my third category! (laughs) There was the 
Jen Shaw from Salt Lake City, who was running a, I don't think it was officially a Ponzi scheme. But no, it's just it was, a scam. Right, just straight yeah. fraud yeah, for elderly people. A telemarketing fraud for mm-hmm. old people. Really? <laughs> Which she apparently was arrested while they were filming. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wow. This is a filming. Salt Lake City yeah. lady? Mm-hmm. So, like, a Mormon lady doing a big scam. Mormon adjacent. Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. she, <laughs> like, did nothing to hide any of her wealth or act like uh-huh. she wasn't just, which is ballsy when you're running mm-hmm. a scam. Yeah. yeah. And it's weird to sign up for that show because part of the deal is that you brag about how much money you have and yeah. you brag right. about your possessions in your house and all right. that stuff. Right. Yeah. And so to do that when you've, you've gotten a lot of those things by scamming old people mm-hmm. seems to be, oh. seems mm-hmm. to invite scrutiny. As they yeah. Say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so she huh. appar- apparently, what I've read on the internet, she apparently gets arrested while the cameras are rolling. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that. Wow. So Salt Lake City, the season is still running right now, and you haven't got to no. that moment. Well, it stopped, and then this arrest came after the oh, first season. Right. And I think after the reunion of the first season, too, yes. because they didn't ask, they asked her what she did for a living on the reunion, and she gave this very, like, cockamamie answer about marketing. Yeah, marketing and <laughs> spreadsheets uh. and selling leads and bullshit. And people are like, eh. You have like four assistants, mm-hmm. so huh. yeah. So I think it happened when they were filming the second season. Yeah. Which is oh, not, okay. Well, it has not aired yet. Okay. So they're gonna hype that yes. a lot. I hope right. so. Yeah. I'd love to see an arrest. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, and then also, you know, Erica Jane from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, who is uh, going through some ongoing legal troubles. What's her legal troubles? Did- uh, her husband, Tom Girardi, the lawyer that stole money from a bunch of victims mm-hmm. of horrible, horrible accidents from huge companies that did huge payouts. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. And everybody, there's a conspiracy theory about her divorce being a sham, that mm-hmm. they're using it to hide money. Yes. Mm-hmm. Did you watch Ooh. Housewife and the Hustler on I Hulu? I did watch it. I did, too. I did. And I laughed out loud. I hooted <laughs> <laughs> when they showed the, the, the shot of the exterior of his uh, a law firm with an empty can just blowing down yes. the street. And I was like, what in the hell? <laughs> also, that Daniel Daniel Stop was one of their like expert witnesses. Oh, I yeah. was like, uh-huh. that's yeah. where we went, huh? Mm, yeah, that really, really elevated the entire oh experience for me. Where do you come down on that? Do you think she knew? I think... Best case scenario is she knew enough to not ask questions. Yeah, that's a good, I like that. But I didn't, because his, I mean, his kind of, not claim to fame, but he was, he's the lawyer that like Aaron, and Aaron Brockovich, like Mm -hmm. he's, he's, you know, like that. Oh, okay, I'm putting, okay, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, that was his sort of initial thing years ago. So for him to win and earn money, that means he's getting payments and settlements for victims of like you yeah. know companies are screwing over and you know accidents and all that kind of stuff so then again to when his wife goes on a reality show where <laughs> your job is to brag about all the things you have and all the money you have it seems a little bit to kind of yeah, fly what in the was face she doing of, like why yeah. would she do that yeah. that's what is kind of up in the air because mm-hmm. then it was this idea that he basically funded her lifestyle and like made it possible for her to be it right. Roxy hard on Broadway and all of these things. And now people are like, well, that money literally was supposed to be for people who got blown up oh by gosh. GE in an accident. Like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. And then you have to take into account, too, the fact that, I mean, he's, he's 81 and she's 50. And they've been married for 20 years, right? Oh, boy. So, <laughs> you know, obviously, part of this is an, an old guy trying to keep his young hot yep. wife happy mm-hmm. you know so and then you're like so how much were you willing to do yeah to keep her happy mm-hmm. you know so Ooh, boy. Uh, yeah, there's, there's lots of factors but yeah that's all playing out of the current season of is it okay House so it's appearing on on, yeah. on film uh-huh. which has brought one of my favorite quotes thus far in housewives history when the divorce first hits and but none of the other stuff has hit yet so far on the season like all the legal stuff and garcelle one of the other characters <laughs> says I mean, why doesn't she just wait? And the other ladies are like, wait? And she's like, I mean, he's 81. <laughs> like, dead fan serious. Like, why wouldn't you just wait for the money? He's old. Uh-huh. That's a fair question. I mean, it's a very it fair a question. Guy. Yeah. It made me like her more. Yeah. Just for saying it. Wow. Okay. So big trend. Has that happened before on Housewives legal stuff? I mean, uh, there was the mafia girl, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. One, yeah. She went to jail for okay. a year, but there were, 
that kind of happened outside of the film. Oh, okay, so this stuff uh, is being you saw like into. clips of it, but also right. that gave her like somehow that whole situation gave her royalty status on Bravo. Mm-hmm. Like that woman can do no wrong now. Like she's wow. kind of the worst character and is really oh, yeah. sort of ruining the show. But they'll never get rid of her because it's like ratings gold. I'm assuming, mm-hmm. or she's yeah. So I don't know what's going to happen with these two if that. Because notoriously, neither have been fired from their seasons. Mm-hmm. Like, they're both still cast members, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Remains to be seen. Mm-hmm. What will happen? Speaking of reality stars, Heath, mm-hmm. keeping up with the Kardashians is ending. How are you going to deal with that since you have played the Kardashians game to world champ status for years? Um. This is, I don't know if this is a little known fact or not. I've never watched Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Seriously? <laughs> I watched, I've seen a clip where I think she lost her earring in the ocean and it was about a three minute clip. I've never <laughs> watched that show. They all seem like appalling people. They seem <laughs> I play her game <laughs> yes. on my phone. But uh, yeah, they seem like awful people. I want no part of that. How did you get into playing the game? What's the game? Explain it to me. Oh, there's oh. a Kim Kardashian Hollywood is the game. And you, um, you play yourself in the game and you go to like photo shoots and um, movie premieres and, and you go on dates with people. Mm-hmm. And, um, so yeah, I've been doing that for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> seven years. Uh-huh. And two what? things. Heath was ranked like number one in the world for At a while. One point, yeah. 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 And two, over the past seven years, anytime we're hanging out, there's at least one time where I look <laughs> over and he's on his phone at a photo shoot or they're, something. They're all timed. Oh, right? so you have to do yeah, it. You yeah. have to do it in a, in a certain amount of time. So you've got to set an alarm. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you have to pause your actual interactions <laughs> to, get, to finish your photo I shoot. would think so. If you made yes. it to number one, there yeah. has to be sacrifices right. yeah. to climb the ladder. <laughs> yeah. And this week, this past week, there was a, uh, like they were openly encouraging me to cheat on my spouse in this game, which I thought like, was questionable. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh-huh. I'm like, I don't. Is this what you want? Yeah. <laughs> what about the children? How were they? How were they encouraging you? Oh, I was uh, going to a winery with some other uh, character that I'm not married to, and he was hitting on me. Oh. Yeah. Like hardcore. Wow. Like, well, not like hardcore, hardcore. I mean, it is a game. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I I didn't know anything about this game. Oh, boy. I love so much that you've never watched the show, and you've devoted mm-hmm. so much time to this. That's better, yeah. It makes you even more complex, and I love it. Oh, I yeah. I'm an onion. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant it was a trivia game at first, and I was, like, really impressed mm. that you could. Okay, after this, you need to show her the game oh, yeah, so we can get some visuals yeah. going on. Yeah, you need to see this. Mm-hmm. All right, so my third one is just a minor moment, but I really seized on it, uh-huh. and that is Lizzo and Chris Evans flirting online. <laughs> oh, yes. So yes, in April, yes. Lizzo drunk DM'd Chris Evans with three emojis, and I forgot to write down what they were, but they were suggestive emojis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she admitted it on social media the next day, saying she shot her shot, you know, mm-hmm. and that he she wants to marry him, basically. Mm-hmm. And then Chris Evans followed up by following her and replying, no shame in a drunk DM. God knows I've done worse on this app. LOL. Referring, of course, to Penisgate uh-huh. when he accidentally oh, yeah, posted yeah. a picture of his ding dong yeah on, on twitter i didn't feel like it was an accident not for me maybe right for him. well i remember we had a happy hour shortly after that and i'm like find it find it mm-hmm. find it online right mm-hmm. now we never did find it oh it's bummer anyway so they still talk online and this week i don't know if it was lizzo herself or one of her friends put on social media a doctored photo of a family with like three kids and put lizzo's face on the wife and chris evans on the husband <laughs> And it just delighted me to no end because I'm like, I want this union to happen. Yes. Mm-hmm. They would create beautiful babies. Uh-huh. Yes. I think Chris Evans is the bee's knees mm-hmm. and Lizzo is 100% that bitch. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm hoping happens in the latter half of 2021 mm-hmm. is those two make it work. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's America's ass. She deserves America's ass. <laughs> she does. <laughs> yes. She deserves America's ass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree with that. She deserves all the things. And he consistently posts pictures of his dog. It's the most adorable thing. Oh, that's nice. I might be admitting that I have a Chris Evans thing, but... (laughs) 
I no. mean, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Why not? So maybe I'm I living don't think you're alone. Lizzo and, mm-hmm. you, and, you know, just saying, like, do it, do it for mm-hmm. all of us. Mm-hmm. Make it happen. Firm wishes, mm-hmm. sending that into the universe yes. for the rest of the year. Lizzo is us. Lizzo is Lizzo. us. Lizzo is us white people in Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who want to marry Chris Fair Evans. Uh-huh. Yes. That seems. Yep, that's right. That's full right. circle, I uh-huh. think. That's full circle. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I mean, we have a big one that we haven't covered. Which is? Brittany. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Conservatorship. Yeah. No conservatorship. Four really, no force drugs. Everyone's sort of changing their minds. Yes. About Brittany. The little tide turn on Justin Timberlake. Uh huh. Like you're kind of an asshole. What you did uh-huh. there. Uh huh. And she couldn't say anything then. Yeah. I will admit I changed my mind. I was, you know, when, like, when all that was happening, I thought she seemed just like a train wreck. Mm-hmm. But then after reading Train Wreck, mm-hmm. I was a little more, you know, understanding of that. Mm-hmm. And watching that Hulu documentary just made me want to hug her. Mm-hmm. Yes. Hug her hard. And it's so confusing in this world that we live in that we have this adult female who's like, I don't need this. And yet somehow she still has it. It's still mm-hmm. being forced. It's bizarre. It blows my mind. Well, and it was a particularly, I mean, the timing was particularly, I don't know if bad's the right word, but like the week where they told her we're extending your conservatorship was the same week that Bill Cosby got off. Yes. Kind of yes. Yes. Like, and I don't, you know, if, uh, if you know, a forty-year-old woman says, "I'm fine. Let me make my own life choices." Why, why do we have a legal system in place yeah. where they're not like, oh, "Okay, sure, yeah. we'll, we'll let you do that. We'll keep an eye on you, but we'll let you do that." And your whole life, you know, argument that she's not able to make decisions. She's been performing and working hard mm-hmm. for so many years, mm-hmm. so you trust her to do that and to make money, right? But as long as that no one was watching that yeah right. everybody yeah. just freaked out after she decided at las vegas she wasn't going to do it and just walk straight out which is really actually like a pretty lucid baller move mm-hmm. like just walk straight out but i guess i mean it's not like she murdered a bunch of people mm-hmm. we're acting like no. she need like she needs a psych hold mm-hmm. in the same time frame might i offer that you had all these people freaking out about how parents couldn't go to the olympics and they're like your kids yes. are fine they're fine in a foreign country by themselves Brittany, however 40 no not okay right. by yourself. right and didn't she earn the money what the fuck but daddy is dirty and daddy's very dirty, dirty, mm-hmm. dirty wants that money yeah and well i mean that's kind of i think where this all came from is he was like oh this money isn't going to be mine to spend anymore exactly so let's, mm-hmm. let's paint her to be uh, incapable of making good decisions yeah. for herself. I went down a little rabbit hole, and did you know there's like a podcast where they spend the whole time only discussing like her Instagram, Twitter, whatever, any social media she has, those posts, <laughs> oh. and looking for secret signs of what she's really saying. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, it, I mean, it's. I mean, I guess that's better than going down the QAnon rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. I Go think. ahead and, and yeah. you know, scrutinize Britney's But Instagram. they're really good at bringing it all the way back to like, look at what she's really saying. She wants out. Like, wow. yeah. Wow. Okay. That's probably another in the duh category. Yeah. 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 Hmm. But also good for you. I mean, way to seize on the moment. Yeah. And get yourself a podcast. So that's another podcast you can't start on your own. So again, you're you're stuck with us. I'll stop analyzing Britney's uh, (laughs) social media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's next for you, Heath? Um, I think. uh, um, I mean, we we should probably spend a minute talking about the Olympics after this. Yes. Yes. Right now. Uh Generally. I would say the inauguration. <laughs> oh! Oh my gosh! Yes. How did because we miss there that? Was, that was this year, right? Jeepers. There was Amanda Gorman, the you know, yes. so well spoken, so talented uh, poet, and you know, poets aren't cool. She poets made poets cool. cool. She made poets very cool. Like that book was crazy selling after uh-huh. that. Yeah. Uh-huh. And she then she got like the front cover of Vogue or something. Yes. Like yeah. completely different path for any other poet. And right. I, I forget what, someone offered her a whole bunch of money to like endorse something and she politely declined because it wasn't something that really aligned with sort of what she believed in it. And I can't remember what it, uh, what it was, but I mean, this That's was, I mean, awesome. this changed so many people's lives because, yeah. you know, Think of pre-inauguration. You go on a date with someone and you're like, what do you what do you do? And they're like, I'm a poet. You would get up and leave. <laughs> <laughs> and now, after she did that, yeah. they were like, all right, let's see how this goes. You're right. Hmm. 
Mm. That's I don't point. know if there's a guy out there that says he's po- I'm still going to say no on that one because <laughs> then I'm just envisioning I'm going to pay for everything you know well, yeah. And, mm. yeah that's mm. not an investment I can make at this time it doesn't fit in my budget I'm what I pictured right away was having to sit and maybe it's because I have kids so I went right there but like having to sit through poetry readings or <gasps> yes. like read this right like, <laughs> being like mm-mm. oh like gosh. slam poetry night at the local <laughs> yeah <laughs> like I'm not no 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 but there was that. There was Lady Gaga singing the national anthem. It was. Oh, yeah. Was, I, like, you know, something else. This is, okay, this is how weird time is, right? That mm-hmm. feels like forever it ago. It feels yeah. like forever enough ago that J-Lo and A-Rod were together there. Mm-hmm. With all due respect to Jennifer Lopez, let's all agree to not hire her to do things where she just sings. She is an entertainer. She's an entertainer. <laughs> she's yeah. Not, yeah. She's not... She's not just a, a singer. Like, no. That's just not. Yeah. Like, yeah. Agreed. Let's not set her up to fail, everybody. <laughs> mm-hmm. I agree with that. I forgot that she was part of it, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, of course, there was Bernie and his mittens. Oh, Bernie and the mittens. This yes, started exactly. the memes for well, all might the might be the most passive aggressive I lost move. Yeah, uh-huh. that was pretty. In the history of passive aggressive moves. Just <laughs> the mittens <laughs> big over mittens on each other. more popular than your and face. And I'm just going to sit in this chair and look curmudgeonly. Yeah. Yeah. Just the human form of grumpy cat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, just I mean, it was you know sort of Kamala Harris was you know our first uh, yeah. uh, beautiful woman, mm-hmm. uh, vice president. You know Joe Biden, who's imperfect, but I think he's got a good heart. Yes. <laughs> at the end of the yeah. day, and just sort of getting rid of the garbage. It was just a, it was a nice it was a nice day. <laughs> it was a nice day, a day I'd forgotten about. One of the, one of my favorite memories of that day is that somebody at my office was trying to set up a meeting during that, and one of our creative directors just flat out said, "I'll be watching the inauguration during that time," <laughs> <laughs> and just declined the Good meeting. Good for was them. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was such a moment of hope after so long. Mm-hmm. We needed that. And then I mean, then you watch it and you're like ninety percent enjoying. It. At least me anyway. I was mostly enjoying it. And then I'm just like. What's gonna happen? Like, yes, like, like I was yes. afraid something was gonna happen. Yes, I had that yes. feeling the whole time. Because two weeks before uh-huh. had been the insurrection, and yeah. So we were just expecting something terrible to mm-hmm. happen. But instead, Kamala Harris's stepdaughter got a modeling contract. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, so the, all is right with the yeah. world. Everything was great. Look <laughs> on that, Eric Trump. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah no doubt. Good lord, Eric Trump. That's that's the only sad thing about that era coming to an end is that there was not a sketch that I loved more on SNL than Eric than and the Trump brothers Junior. sketches. I just so good. I could not keep it together during those. They were great. What's great is that you know a lot of criminal activity is starting to be prosecuted. So plenty of mm-hmm. opportunity for them to come back on SNL. I'm hoping. I'm hoping yes. that we just keep that as a recurring. Yeah, a recurring character. That, uh, in the Four Seasons Landscaping Company and. Uh, oh my god <laughs> oh my god i forgot about that the rudy giuliani face oh, yes. the makeup coming off wow and that lady that well where'd you put those felts yes <laughs> that lady <laughs> what what january was a wild wild uh, time wild there weren't vaccines yet <laughs> no. not very many anyway. it's it's the wild wild west mass. When I was taking notes for this, I had to catch myself because 2020 and 2021 feel like all the same. All the same, yeah. So I was like, oh, no, no, wait, that was, that was like a year and a half ago. It just mm-hmm. feels like it was yesterday because this whole year is And it weird. doesn't help with the Olympics that all the logos still say 2020. 2020, <laughs> yes! <laughs> and I understand, like, in the actual facilities, you know, you're not going to reprint all that stuff and redo everything. But, but like, when you show it on putting. TV, you know, yeah. it's sort of like... It is, yeah, like they're just... It's 2020. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, we wanted to talk a little bit about the Olympics, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. What's your hot take so far? Um, I thought it it's less distracting that there's nobody in the stands than I thought it would be. Mm. I thought it would be very it would kind of, and maybe that's after watching, you know, I don't watch a ton of sports, obviously. You may have picked up on that. <laughs> <laughs> but after, you know, a year of, you know, very few people being in the stands for, you know, yeah. football and basketball and all that kind yeah. of stuff, that maybe it just uh, isn't as alarming. But, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, Simone Biles is you know, an American treasure and should be treated yeah. as such. And if she yeah. decides, you know, I'm going to take a step back, then... I'm going to prioritize you know, my health, yes. then, yeah. Maybe, as if you are a mediocre man, maybe this is your That's threatening. To, to shut up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It does feel so reminiscent. I think it's, you know, 
even more clear because it's a black woman, but it seems so reminiscent of so many dudes we probably know in our lives mm -hmm. that invest too much in college football, exactly. where like their entire moods all dependent on the shoulders of these 19 and 20 right. year olds. And when they fail, it's like they themselves fail. I find it super hypocritical because I feel like this is the sport where when they win gold medals, they're like, that's not even a sport. Right. They didn't play basketball. They didn't play football. They didn't even have to run. That's not a sport. And now they're like, you got to do it for a country. We need another <laughs> fucking gold medal. What are you talking We got to beat China. I'm like, what? What are you even talking about? What? It is. It's that weird level of like patriotism now yes. that's gotten super weird. Yes. But like I was telling you guys, I saw a thing earlier today where it's like, okay, so you want Simone Biles to suck it up for the team, but you're not willing to take a vaccine for the good exactly. of the country. Right. So, cool, cool, cool. That yeah. makes good sense. Yeah. 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 Great I know logic. many of those men were watching gymnastics to begin with. Exactly. Right. They had an opinion one way or the other until, you know. Until this. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And where were you when Michael Jordan said, no, I'm going to play baseball? That by far is a weirder move. Like, I think it is. Like, it's a, a person specifically mentioning their mental health as a reason mm -hmm. for leaving and being that person as a black woman people are losing their goddamn minds mm -hmm. and she doesn't know anybody an explanation at all i mean if she's just no. not doing yeah. it anymore i mean you know she's been in the olympics twice before she's won yeah. gold medal she's good to go and like yeah. you said aaron that then allowed um the the young woman that i forget her name S sunny lee thank you i mean, i'm apologies because i'm not sure if it's sunny or suny okay. lee but and I, I cried. I cried. Zero which is Olympics. sad because yeah, I go. should know the name after watching her and crying, <laughs> but I don't. So it's the only sports I ever watch, honestly. It's Olympics? Yes. I get really into it for yeah. no really good reason. It's not just like a USA thing. It's more, I think they do a good job of storytelling. Like they get you yeah. into it. They, they tell you their whole life story. Yeah. They've been working at this forever. And then you watch them win. You're like, oh my God, that's mm -hmm. just amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, I don't so know. So have you both been watching the Olympics? Pretty much all of it. Okay. I, I have a play, a little bit. I'm always kind of like, oh, it's the Olympics again. Oh, wah, wah. And then like five <laughs> minutes later, I'm like, Ooh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Yeah, you know? I don't know. We watched trampoline competition yesterday morning for a half an hour, and I was like, what is my life? <laughs> There's a trampoline competition? There sure is. There it sure is. is. What happens in a trampoline competition? Um, are they all on little mini trampolines doing like aerobic moves? Like, what are they doing? No, it's just uh, one person at a time, but they will jump, and they measure how high they go, and they do flips and stuff, and they, you know, there's like... Mm -hmm. uh, artistry oh, and there's this? Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah there's and some there's, weird olympic sports yeah, yeah. level of difficulty but it's still got that i think i want to say his name is tim daggett i think it's his name and he is one of the commentators uh -huh. and he is a nitpicky little asshole <laughs> 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 he does gymnastics and he did the trampoline thing too and he just it, everything is he's got a problem with everything but I just, you know, he seems like a nightmare to be next to you on a plane. He's yeah. a nightmare to listen to at the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And he just needs to quit being such a bitch. <laughs> I don't remember what this newscaster's name is, but I know before the whole Simone Biles thing happened and she the qualifying event didn't go quite like they thought it was going to. So they were like, they got out a whiteboard like it was election time and they were doing like the path to gold and they were circling things. And all I could think of was SNL and, you know, Chris Matthews, or no, it's not Chris Matthews, who was the guy that they showed his melted hand because he'd been touching the whiteboard <laughs> too much. Like that's what it reminded me. I'm like, we had to work a whiteboard back in. We had in to work it back where in. Where we could circle yeah. and be like, she could do this or this or this and then she could win over here and i'm like this isn't no we don't just need get back to the competition and on no. top of i mean we talked before a little bit about age with the football players but yeah. like she's 24 years old yes I'm like just leave her alone enough she's 24 well and then i was seeing this week that you know all these other gymnasts had been competing on terrible injuries and you know they didn't feel empowered enough to say like I got to get out because maybe they hadn't won the awards right. that simone has mm -hmm. and they don't have the name value that she has and so it felt like she was kind of doing it for them, too, like mm -hmm. to set a precedent. You're like, yeah. fuck all of you. I also feel like it's just a lack of understanding about that sport because yeah. if you, it's not just it's so physical, but it's also their whole life. I mean, what they put in their body, what they, and not that other Olympic athletes don't do it. But Simone Biles diet is vastly different than a Michael Phelps who just yeah. has to eat as many calories as he can so he can eat what he wants. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, they've done interviews with these women who are like, well, yeah, maybe I have a bite of cake on my birthday if it's my actual birthday. But otherwise, it's because oh, they have to in order to execute those moves they have to be so small and just pure muscle so there's also this whole other aspect of mental wear that i don't yeah. feel like they get credit for that mm -hmm. is really a step up on some even some other olympic athletes mm -hmm. because 
it's just the sheer wow. way the sport is. So I know that like, you know, at a young age, you can pretty much retire from that because your body can't take it anymore. Right. Do you think Simone Biles is going to retire? Or what do you think is next for her? Well, I, don't, I don't think in a, I mean, if it, uh, next Olympics are, I guess, three years away because yeah. we had a, uh, that's still, a 27-year-old gymnast seems like a... That seems tough, yeah. Yeah, it seems tough to pull that one off. But it also seemed like maybe she might be okay with that. It felt yeah. like she was kind of saying, I like, think there was a lot. A lot mm-hmm. leading up to this one that they didn't think she was going to compete. Like, she, they kind of almost pushed her into it like Mm -hmm. there was some question about at 24 whether she could do it so and i would think after this to come back with that level of pressure would be really Mm -hmm. difficult and Mm -hmm. and it it does remind me too of the 96 olympics when carrie stroke did that yes you know she did the uh, yes uh, i forget what the event's called the bounce (laughs) the bounce one yep that's the one land Mm -hmm. situation yep that's it (laughs) with the bar right yeah when she you know i mean when when she she was was visibly hurt and we were all sort of like you know, and the, and the way that it was kind of uh, portrayed was to, like, you know, look what she did for her country. And, and then it turned and, out later it was an abusive situation. Right, yeah, so. and now you look at it and it's just like, yeah. well, she shouldn't have had to. As a country, right. we should have said, you, you don't have to do that. Yeah, you yeah. are a young girl and this is too much. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. I mean, in all these years, I thought the relentless promotions for Suddenly Susan that NBC ran during the 96 <laughs> Olympics were the worst part. But now it's not anymore. <laughs> so this is a real win for Brooke Shields. <laughs> Suddenly, Susan. Wow, oh yeah. God. Sorry, I made you remember that. I know. <laughs> okay. I was like, your memory is a scary place because I hadn't thought of that show in you know years what, though, and years. Then what got rewritten for me with Brooke Shields was when Tom Hanks went after her for being on like postpartum depression medication. Oh, and yeah. everybody was like, oh no, don't. You talk mean Tom about- Cruise? Tom Cruise. Okay, I'm sorry, I was Tom, say, Hanks. Tom Hanks. Oh, would shit. Do that, would he? Oh, shit. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> don't don't <disparage>. at me. <laughs> It's Chet Hanks is the weird yeah, one, not sorry, Tom Hanks. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Tom Hanks is a goddamn delight, That's I'm right. sure. I'm sure he is. Forrest Gump would never. He would never. 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 Tom Cruise would, though. Tom Cruise definitely yeah. would. That's right, what I forgot about do? that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. So how much longer of the Olympics is there? Because that's where my, I have no idea what's happening. I and week, I think. Okay. Three Things that you're looking forward to? Okay. Track and field. <laughs> track and field. Okay. And field. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. was. We did watch a little bit of track and yeah. field. Uh, maybe Friday night or something. Uh-huh. There was a gentleman who was, you know, had tights on. Not much else. Hmm. Just like you know what you're doing, sir. Yes, you do. <laughs> you are attracting a certain demographic, and I am in. <laughs> no one is criticizing you, but you knew what you were doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You are asking for this that uh-huh, I am giving uh-huh, you, yeah. Uh-huh. That's sort of what I feel like if you watch beach volleyball, too. Like, there's a lot, those outfits, you're like, Ooh. I mean, I think I'm supposed to be watching something else, but this is fascinating. I, I follow Leslie Jones, and mm-hmm. she's been watching a lot of the Olympics, yes. and it's always great stuff. Like, oh, 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 look at that man in the tiny Speedos, and it's <laughs> it's delightful, because it's what we're all thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So before we wrap up, can we talk about J-Lo and Ben? How do we feel about the reunion? Because that's a big moment of 2021, too. Uh, it is. It was also a big moment of 2002. <laughs> <laughs> it sure yeah. was. I don't. Is it bad that I'm over it? You're over it? Yeah. Like, yeah. At one point, I was like, oh, wow. And then I was kind of like, what? And now yeah. every day, it's like, guess what? Their exes don't even care. And I'm like, they probably don't. It's been fucking years. I always, for me, and my, the only thing I think about with this is that I feel bad for Jennifer Garner. Because I feel like yes! he, was, he was married to her in the interim. And then the whole time, was he just thinking of Jennifer right? Garner? Yes. Yes. And then they keep, yeah. Like, and it's very much the girl next door and the really sexy ex-girlfriend. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. Your Capital One lady and like, uh-huh. you know, J-Lo. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I mean, God bless him. Everybody's happy. I'm happy for him. But at the same time, I'm just like, what about Jennifer Garner? And also, <laughs> what about your, what, why were we creating the butt scene? Yeah, that, yeah. Also, I found out that that yacht was like $13 million. And then I was like, you know what? I don't care that much about yeah. these rich people. I liked it better when he was dating the Anna... Darmus, yeah. and they were just randomly doing things like they'd be seen out together sometimes with masks sometimes not always mm-hmm. with dunkin donuts yeah sometimes a dog sometimes not it was more i don't know that felt like where ben should be uh-huh. this yeah. feels like we're striving and we're reaching yeah, and i'm point. not sure how it's gonna end for I'm not you sure either yeah like, every time they leave the house she's just like you can't wear that yeah yeah <laughs> exactly. also a rod's gonna be there so right let's get your game together uh-huh. <laughs> We're gonna it need is, to it's a lot of pressure. 
Yeah, right. it's a lot of pressure. But I also think, I mean, how many, she's, you know, not to, I, I'm not like wedding shaming anybody. Don't take it as that. But she's she's been married and engaged a lot. A few times. Like, you know, mm-hmm. she, yes. uh, things have a shelf life, let's say, for her. That's very but true. I, someone, explain to me how this is going to be different. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes, agreed. Yeah. And the narrative is like, oh, all this time, and now they're back together, uh-huh. and it's going to last. I'm like, well, they're celebrities. Mm-hmm. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to your point about Jennifer Garner calling it Benefer. Yeah. Yeah. Ouch. Mm-hmm. My name was Jennifer. Or yeah. Is Jennifer. Like, we could have been Benefer, but we weren't. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Instead, all I could think of uh, as I was re- revisiting this reunion uh, was when at the Oscars, when Ben, like, won something for directing Argo, I think, mm-hmm. and he gave that very, like, weird, passive aggressive. Uh, thank you speech to his wife to Jennifer Garner no. and it said something like Jen you know we've been married and it's tough it's real tough but I, I love you it was very and it kept you know the camera was on her face and you could tell she was trying to be like uh, okay so there's something, the plane. Land something the plane. good here uh-huh. maybe kind of but right now I'm being painted as a bitch and the camera is on my face I kind of felt like maybe she was just like good luck keeping him sober JLo good luck <laughs> yeah. to you because I've done the rehab Ben and it ain't pretty yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Also, our kids hate him, so deal with that. And good luck with that back tattoo, that whole back tattoo Ugh. that you got. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. It's so bad. So yeah. bad. It's so huge and bad. And it's took so, so huge long and to bad. Do it. It's just like, oh there's God. so many points to turn around during uh-huh. that. Yeah, just, so many opportunities. Uh-huh. Just, so many opportunities. I'm sorry. I really brought it down. Maybe, I, was any, were you excited about it? I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was I just... peed all over that right from the <laughs> jump. <laughs> Sorry. No, excited isn't the word I would okay. use for it. Okay. It was mostly bemused and mm. interested to hear what you guys thought about it. Yeah. Because honestly, because time is so weird this year, this week I had to sort of like go back into archives of pop culture stuff from this. Yeah. You know, and I went back as far as April. And that's when I found out like, oh, they've been back together since April. And I was like, huh. Really? So, it's been since April? Yeah. I don't know. No, that could be. I just, time is yeah. weird. Time mm-hmm. is weird. Time mm-hmm. is weird. Hmm. So that's where we're at. I also like that our news is on levels now. You know, like we, mm-hmm. Benefer is the same as like a mental health situation with Simone Biles. Yep. Right. Is the same as climate change, is the same as the Delta variant. Right. I um, like that we're making no distinction anymore nope. between. Yeah. Let's talk about infrastructure and let's talk about legally blonde turning 20. It's all the same. <laughs> all the same. <laughs> so true. Oh my God. Oh. And maybe that's an indication of our mental state is we need both. Mm-hmm. We that's need a true. little reality and then we need a little surreal- a little surreality mm-hmm. all at balance. the same time. Mm-hmm. Let's hope there's some more great moments left in 2021. Yeah. I mean, Heath, will you come back to discuss that oh, as sure. the year? Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, we need a part two. Yeah, we yeah. need a part we can two see, of And then we can decide <laughs> if the things we thought were big even matter exact. now. Exactly. Oh, my God. Yeah. Benefer might be broken cool. up by then. They might be. Might be a new Benefer. Who's yeah. going to... Who's going to fuck up the 9-11 20th anniversary? Who's, Who's going to mess <laughs> that up? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, there's going to be something. Somebody that's, messes that up bad. Mm-hmm. That's just... Somebody, somebody's going to tweet something, and it's going to be the wrong thing to tweet. Yeah. Yes. Can yes. we hope it's Kim Reynolds? Can we have something like that come back on Please, her? Please. Can we? Please. Because I... Yeah. Well, there's a few months left in the year yeah. for yeah. weird things to happen. Yep. Good Christmas wishes. Uh-huh. <laughs> I guess that's before Christmas, but still. Heath, we'll keep thinking of ways to bring you back mm-hmm. because, again, we are heading you off from creating your own <laughs> and because we are selfish, selfish people that right. love you and want uh-huh. you here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, and I mean, we didn't mention this, but really one of our biggest pop culture moments of 2021 was alluded to in an email, which was our cookbook episode. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Which... That should be obviously number one. Yeah. Well, yeah. I clearly. think maybe the other number one would be Dig Me Out, which <gasps> comes out this fall. Written Look by our at own this Amy man right here. That was good. Showing my book. Uh-huh. That was good. On the podcast. That was good. I want to be clear that no one wrote that for him. No. That he just came up with that and put it in, which is why he's our only special guest. Uh-huh. Exactly. Uh-huh. 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 You're right. That's You're true. right. We'll have to talk about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that will dominate everyone's mm-hmm. discourse. Will for the rest of the year. Jennifer Lopez in the movie version? Mm, I might go Jennifer Garner. How's that? Oh, mm. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Suck it, role. Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> mm-hmm. Agreed. Don't know where to go from there. I don't either. But <laughs> just to say we'll be back next week. We'll be back. Week. We won't have Heath next week. No, but it'll be but okay. It'll be okay. Because he'll be come okay. back. It'll mm-hmm. be okay. Yeah. And in the meantime. Happy reading. Mm-hmm.